So Melanator, we'll, we'll be talking about email obfuscation techniques. Uh, Melanator.com offers a receive only email addresses. So say you're going to a conference and you want to be Mike at Melanator.com. Uh, that's one way of being able to contact someone if you want to, but you don't have to. That's basically what's advertised for. So if, for instance, you were talking to a recruiter, recruiter instead of some person at a company who may be receiving a ton of emails and you just don't want to read them. That's sort of what Melanator was designed for, to receive all these emails that you don't want to look at. It, but because of the fact that you never actually created an account on Melanator.com, anyone can look at the messages from Melanator.com. So that's one way of communicating reasonably anonymously. And I'll, I'll show you more how to do that in a minute. We'll talk briefly about cypherpunk remailers. If you go to Wikipedia and go to remailers, it's basically a system of anonymously sending emails through a complicated chain of servers that remove identifying information from a, partic from a particular email. Um, that's complicated. Um, I used to include burnout.com, which would, uh, we'll talk about why I'm not recommending that site in a little bit. And also tormail.com, which is incredibly interesting. So, Melanator is designed to host disposable email addresses. So, you can just go to melanator.com and you can receive, and it will be, um, and you can re receive any email at any email address at melanator.com. So, I realize that statement is reasonably confusing, so I'll try to show what I mean here. So, um, because of the fact that there's no log on, you can type in any text here. And we can see that the user ASDF sample has received no emails. Now, what we can do from, from here is send an email to ASDF sample. And then uh, anyone who has a web browser can read those emails. So um, the emails only exist for about a week or so, but, it, but um, after that time it's deleted by the server. But if you want to be able to send emails to, uh, to someone and have them not reply, but be able to read all of your email content, that's one way to do it. It's slightly evil, but it works. Yeah. Or like, Basically, like I, you could send email to Joe, I could send email to Jenny, as long as we realize what email addresses to send to, we want to actually be communicating with each other, but we could send emails to each other. Generally speaking, no. Now, here's the thing. It can be done if you have a misconfigured mail server. If you don't have a misconfigured mail server, then, uh, then you can. You can forward it, but that's not the same thing as actually uh, originating. It, it, the email gets deleted after, I think, uh, well, first off, anyone can delete the message if they know that the message exists. The other thing is, is that it will get deleted, I believe, after a week. They might, they might have changed it. The actual email item, the, the email address will always exist. Always 
<coughs> anyone can type in an email address and, and just send it to it. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is designed to give you headaches. They also have, or they actually have a list of alternate domains. Because some people, like there's some websites that would just say, hey, you can't send, you can't have a uh, address at mailier.com. We, we know that this goes to here. They, they have a list of other domains as well. So, yeah, I mean, you could do something like dynamic, dynamically for every person that visits your web page, give them a mailonier.com address. And that way, we'd know if someone was harvesting email addresses from a particular IP address. You could do something like that, too, which would also be evil. And yeah, so here's a list of emails. I like this stuff. Um, so you might be able to send mail. Uh, there is, um, in addition to the URL that says how you can send relay mail through Ubuntu, but most of the cable or DSL providers in the US blocked this because it was using, being used for spam. So uh, you can either do that. Um, if you look at the documents 2600PD003, excuse me, or PD005, at a certain point, host daddy was actually mis misconfigured to allow any domain to send email to, a, to any other domain. This was actually a feature because if you had server services there, like they were basically just giving everyone the same SMTP server. So in some ways, this is good. In some ways, this is very bad. Um, but that's one way of being able to send mail from anyone to anyone. Um, now, we'll, but we'll talk about a better technique here in a minute, too. Um, if you're interested or you've heard of Cypherpunk, uh, Mix Master, Min, Max Mini Master things, um, that's really a historical way of anonymously sending emails, basically, sort of like Tor, you get. You, your email enters the system as stripped of the um, identifying user information, and that gets forwarded to another email server. It's stripped of its identify, identifying information again. And then eventually, you exit out, out of another mail server uh, to the person you're trying to send it to. Now, um, it may, it's, it's sort of unstable because of the fact that, like, it's, you have to download a very specific client, and it's really hard to configure and set up, but it does exist, so it's good to know that it does exist. Um, so it's something to be aware of, but I wouldn't recommend really using it. There's, an app, there's basically two or three different applications that need to be running at the same time. And when I tried to just set up a sample email to send myself, I couldn't get one of them to work. This is in a Windows environment. It may be possible with certain Linux clients. I, uh, it's, the, the thing for me is that it was not worth my time to try to figure out how to make it work. Okay. Because there's other things that people are using, using now that are more interesting. The, um, it's something to be aware of, but like the mailnear.com is being used a lot, and also uh, there's there's if you Google mailnear.com, there's actually a couple of other services like that, but mailnear is the one that's been around around the longest and it's been the most stable. Um, if uh, there's and we're going to be talking about the Tor mail one in a minute, which is also very interesting. We'll talk about. So people can send a mail later, but can you send an anonymous from mail later? You cannot send an anonymous from mail later without configuring, without misconfiguring another mail server. Okay. Got it. Oh. So the other thing that mail later does is it strips the attachments from the email, which is generally speaking a good thing. Um, so. Uh, 
that's something else to be aware of as well. Um, okay, so so far so good. Okay, so burnout.com was a cool website um, about two years ago when I was giving the class. Two years ago, it was awesome. You, yes, you could take a screenshot of the contents on Burnout. The issue is, is that is, is I mean, what Burnout is is basically it was designed to send notes anonymously, basically via sending a URL to Burnout with a specific sets of attributes around. Now they changed that so that. Um, you have to log in now to send or receive burnouts. If you're logging into a server, you are no longer sending anonymous messages. So that's the reason why we tossed the whole thing out. Uh, that was the way I found out about it. And I'll throw in my two cents here if you're ever in DC. This is the International Spy Museum. They have a really cool Facebook and uh, web page, and also the con and also people that are interested in this type of stuff. Um, so the other thing, too, is that if you go to burnout.com, they used to have a very small acceptable use policy. And now it's expanded to 20 pages or so. So there must have been someone abusing the site. So that's probably all that's happening. 